everyone welcome back to another winning characteristics video with ray from chairline and today we'll be doing an in-depth analysis of docs ticker symbol docs which has been a really strong high-flying ipo and in this video we'll be covering both its uh, winning characteristics both in terms of fundamentals as well as technicals and going all the way back to its ipo and basically talking about the routines process to get it on your radar so you could potentially position in the name uh, during its ipo base during this run-up right here as well as after its strong earnings breakout um, and uh, before we get into it, if you haven't checked out uh, the Trader Lion model book, the sales have been awesome. And we've gotten a ton of excellent feedback. So go ahead and click the link down below in the description or it should be popping up on screen if you haven't checked that out yet. Uh, but with that, uh, Ray, I'll hand it over to you and let's start with um, Docs' IPO. So this is going to be a, a super quick one, uh, given that it just IPO'd back in July. Um, we always start with a day one in these walkthroughs. So the first day we get about 16 million uh, or so in volume that's coming through and with a high closing range. So always uh, step one is when is it going to get on your watch list or a IPO watch list that you maintain? Um, it pretty much should be on your radar right away, given that it has an amazing IPO week with the day one, two, three, four and five. Uh, with price moving from the 40s to, to the 60s. So that, that's, you know, if if you don't know the story already, you haven't been looking at the, the retail roadshow website, you don't really know it's coming. That's absolutely fine if you're a technical trader. Uh, if you're more of a fundamentalist, you might have been anticipating this sort of action coming in or uh, know the story re really well to have it on your radar. So... Um, the, the, the things that we, we learn from a technical standpoint right away with the, with the first three days of the stock is that it's, it's already shown the ability that it could string together a rally. Mm -hmm. um, and if I just take these three days, let's just talk about this ability to rally shows over here, right? We get one, two, and three. Ability to rally shows one, two, and three. Ability to rally one, two with an inside day. Ability to rally one, two, and three. So it's already developed that, you know, its character. Every stock in the market, the way it trades, it could be a byproduct of which institutions are involved, whatever the case might be, is uh, that it's built a character right away and it's, it, it repeatedly shows that sort of character as it moves from the 40s to the 95s. So uh, if we're trading it at this spot, we always say look to the left, even if we're trading at this spot, uh, look to the left, so that we know the potential of the name or what we're getting ourselves into because uh, our goal is to extract some sort of return out of this name. So again, 16 million should be in your process as a great IPO week, consistent volume for the IPO week, which is also a positive. Um, many times you'll see stocks get this first big bar and then really taper down into like the 200K range, but this is consistently above a million, uh, million and a half that shows you there's, there's good interest while the price is move, being, uh, being moved up. Um, in terms of uh, being super active, I mean, if, if we had more history to the left on this side, this would be the first entry through this, uh, what we call the HVC concept, which is high volume close at trader line. So uh, if the price is moving up above this high volume close, that, that could be a potential entry area. I know uh, Scott on Twitter, Scotland, uh, I think he calls it a fish hook. It might right if it, yeah, fish correct hook. me if I'm wrong. So again, it's a it's the, a very similar concept. Uh, price moving or going through a high volume close, you initiate a position and see if you could get some sort of uh, uh, momentum uh, out of it while it goes from the 55 to the 65 area, right? Traders, some traders I know uh, that they they live for this 10 point move because they could really size up. Um, say buy 5k shares and make it a 50k trade at that point, right? So uh, that's that's fairly, you know, um, just from a PV perspective, uh, something to keep in mind. But we know the characters develop. Uh, in terms of what I see right away uh, and what I wait for is the fact that how how it acts on down days in the market is very important for me to build my conviction after we have seen this initial action and some build build up in its character right uh, again we see that when it's down when the market was being pressured right here we see it uh, building up and having a rs day 
right? Mm -hmm. When stocks are supported on down days in the markets, there's only one force in the market that in the markets that could do that. And that's the institutions, right? Uh, it can't be me and you pressing a stock from 46 to 53 while the indexes are down half a percent to a percent. Now it becomes really evident that there's some sort of institutional activity right in this area, right? While the indexes roll over right around that July timeframe, this stock decides that it wants to hold and sort of build, build itself out right in that area. And it even decides to move up and out uh, through that 50 spot. So if you take, take a look at it again with the whole number concepts that we've discussed in previous videos, price on this day, and you can look at the high low ranges moves above the 50 spot price on this day, hold the 50 spot. And that tells you right on the second day when it even wants to come in that this particular day that price is supported. And mm -hmm. this is a concept that we discuss again and again over at TL private is how a stock acts, especially when the, when the market is down. And also, is it supported when it's coming back into that support the very next day? That's a trigger for you to say that this stock is supported. And th these two days right here, these two days right here are really enough to build your conviction uh, on this particular name. Because in this area, you should be keeping our rest list, right? What we call our rest list. Uh, this is going to pop up um, day one, day two. So it's gonna bug you two times and then it's moving through the 50 spot and then it held the 50 spot. Now it's done three things uh, for you to build conviction, right? And at that point, if you're not positioned in other stocks or whatever the case might be, and this starts at a very minimum, it should be moving up on your focus list, right? So if it's moving up on your focus list and you're paying more attention to it, you're more likely to position in a stock like that. So that would be the first entry area um, that I see on this particular chart. We have enough evidence, actually twice, um, that it's shown RS two times and it's moved against the market trend. After that, what I see is we move out on increasing volume versus prior day at a very minimum. But then the rest days that we get, uh, we see that there's very little interest or, or lack of interest to sell stock on mm -hmm. down days for this particular name. And especially given the fact that the market was still going down um, in this area, right? So if we take a look at, so the market's still going down, it's still bucking the trend, market starts to lift and it has double inside days because it, you know, it's just holding that 50 mark and we see a dry up in volume. That tells you that whoever bought one, two, three has no interest in selling the stock. And when, when we see a lack of sellers, the natural reaction to that is that the price is going to advance, right? Um, when you're trading this and, and you're trying to, uh, when your goal is performance, right? You learn the character of the stock and we see one, two, three, and we see one, two, three, right? Uh, which is the character that it built over here. And then it solidifies that character by doing a three-day run resting, doing a three-day run, and then it really rests. Uh, into earnings. So those are the two entries that I see here in this area. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, so once again, we discussed this in the other video, and I really want to highlight this point. When stocks reach an area of that is very known to the markets, which is the prior high, this is the prior high. Everybody knows this, right? It, it's, it's there. It's, it's the all-time high on this stock. When price comes into that and it rallies into it, given that it's a one, two, three, you know, it's a character, the stock is there. It's okay. At this point, you should be expecting turbulence. Mm -hmm. When it's attempting this area that is very well known and it puts in a day like this, at a very minimum, either you're viewing it from the 10 day or whatever the case might be, but selling into strength, right? That's, the theme, that's been the theme this year and we're into August now and going into Q4. Right. If you're not selling into strength and you're still trying to develop a huge position, well, then you're going to have to sit through a lot of pain for you to be doing that. Right. You're going to have to sit through a stock that's going to go from 68 to 52 if you want to build a larger position and whatever uh, the case might be. 
that just hasn't worked this year so far. So um, selling into strength, knowing that the stock is coming into a area that is known to the market, at least, you know, maybe you sell a third, maybe you sell a fourth, whatever your style might be, but getting that chunk out will allow you to potentially sit through this sort of uh, drawdown when you're, when you're down 15 points from the top, right? Mm-hmm. Which is exactly what it's do- been doing recently. And we'll discuss that in a few. Um, after that, I don't see much. I mean, we see below average volume and it's basically waiting on earnings. Me personally, um, my goal is performance. So I, I will sell into strength. And then when it comes back in, uh, and if it's not really performing for me, um, I will get rid of the stock at this point and see if we could, we, if it could, you know, come back up, develop a new spot, give me more RS days, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, build that one same one, two, three recipe uh, again of RS versus 50, dry up through 50, like through 50, hold 50, right? Build me a recipe, build my conviction. And then I'll, I'll power it back on to see if it, if it really does it, another one, two, three, right? So that's, uh, that's my focus. Um, is there anything that you want to highlight? Yeah, I'll add just a few things. So first of all, um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat is, um, as Ray mentioned, it stays liquid throughout this IPO base. And that's something that's really important with IPOs. If you read the lifecycle trade, you know that they highlight that um, the best performing IPOs are the most liquid. And then throughout this IPO base, which uh, as Ray mentioned, this is kind of the IPO base standard pivot. Um, up the right hand side, it acts really logical, nice inside days, um, tight action, um, good moves, basically going up, consolidating, then pushing up again. So it's acting really nicely and, and has that kind of look of a stock under accumulation. And obviously it is because if we go over to MarketSmith, we can see the number of institutions already in this name is, is enormous. So. Um, that's pretty much what I'll add. Um, Ray, do you want to go over to MarketSmith quickly now and then move on to uh, post EPS? Yeah, let's do that. So um, first of all, obviously, it's kind of rare for an IPO to have such strong quarterly numbers as this. You can see earnings triple digit. This also has really strong sales as well, margin strong as well. Uh, decent estimates for this year and 2023 and estimate revisions are up. And what really stands out to me is looking over here how many of the IBD flagship funds are in this stock. And this was showing up um, at least on this bar. So you already had uh, kind of added conviction based on the price action. And then you take a look at the fundamentals. Um, You can see the earnings are off the charts, estimates are strong. And then you see this really strong group of uh, flagship funds basically having positions that just shows you that there's a lot of strong support behind this stock and you can kind of stock and, and wait for your type of setup. And you've all, overall, you've got 203 funds already in uh, the stock at this point. So yeah, that covers the fundamental side. Um, you've got all those things working for you. And then, as I said, you're just looking for another entry after earnings. So um, yeah, Ray, take it away. Okay, so um, we get the earnings and we get a high closing range, right? Uh, now, depending on where you are in your journey, like these days, I'm trying to develop again, like I said in the last video, was trying to develop some sort of method uh, to get me here, you know, in on day one, especially when I see the characteristic that I look for in the markets, which is high, highest volume since IPO week. Mm-hmm. So this particular bar is the highest volume since IPO week. Right now, these days, the way I go about it is... Um, the I, I wait for this close and, and what I'm trying to do is trying to get in on the day like the day it's making the move and not waiting for it to make that move um, the reason being I, I feel you know the, the transfer of information the way research is done things are getting you know they're getting faster they're not going to get any slower in the markets so uh, I what I'm doing is sort of, uh, developing some sort of method to either get me, you know, ha- maybe have an alert set at 60, 6394, or maybe just pick it up at the open where I research the earnings, uh, see what the numbers are. If they're triple digits, maybe that those are the stocks I should have on my focus list. See what the volume is at the open um, and, and come up with some sort of methodology to tackle these so I could get in from the 60, 61, 62 area uh, and not wait uh, for it to make that full move and then watch for consolidation and things of that nature. 
So uh, with this, that is one way to go about it. See if you guys could develop your own methodology to, to sort of get in on that. This, that's a live study that basically uh, I plan on doing for the next few months. Um, the other one is this traditional point, right? I know Ross, for a fact, would, uh, would have at least this area or this alert set because that's a prior, you know, this was in the eyes of the market at this point. Um, let's, let's draw a proper one. So it was in the, in the eye of the market at this point. So that's a level of interest. It, this is another in, intermediate, you know, price point that you could set an alert at 63.94. And then this is your really the last one, 6871. Um, so if you have alerts set at these three levels on the day of earnings while you're seeing volume come in, that could be one way. Or you can really have it up on your screen at the open, knowing that you have triple digit uh, earnings, right? Double digit sales, um, high institutional uh, ownership, right? Uh, in the stock with about 200 funds in there already. Um, and then you have this volume that is on pace to be the highest since IPO week, mm -hmm. which will be really your relative volume calculation uh, right at the open. So those are the spots. Um, did I catch any of them? No, I'm just still developing uh, a consistent method uh, in the markets to, to get in on this first day. Um, what we see in this, what makes this stock special is the fact that after earnings and after it reported that we're seeing higher volume on the second day, uh, which, which is a big clue. And this one is the highest since the IPO day, right? Mm -hmm. So as more research is done on this stock or whatever the case might be, there's clearly more, there's more interest in this particular name, even the, the day after earnings, right? Uh, and we get follow on follow through price action to go with that. So that's mm -hmm. huge, um, especially when you get this uh, with the high closing range, right? Uh, if the same thing happened with a low closing range, that's a different story. But if the fact that it happened with a high closing range is really uh, a big positive. Um, what I see after the fact is, again, what we've seen this stock do. Market is under pressure, and it, it decides that it wants to sort of hold the 70 level right mm -hmm. now it's, it's trading up and down and up and down above the 70 level. Um, and it's showing our rest versus that 70 level. So that will be really the first spot uh, of interest. Now, the other thing that we see that is a complete mirror of this action is this action, mm -hmm. right? Now, let me just get rid of everything. So this action and this action, what's similar is the dry up on the down days. And this is your double, your double inside day. So are there any sellers in the stock? It's a volume is saying, no, nobody wants to sell. Are there any sellers in, in the stock with a double inside day? Volume again says, no. What does price do? One, two, three within the character of it. What does price do? One, two, three. And you can't make this up. It's just the character of the stock, the way it trades. Nobody is willing to sell their stock in this region. Um, and once I sort of learned that, uh, and plus the IOF markets, which is the institutional options flow market, has also been active. Again, you have a recipe, right? Mm -hmm. One, RS, two, hold 70, three, double inside day dry up, right? Uh, four, IOF market. Now, now you have four things to build conviction. Right. If those are not enough and you've not studied each of these concepts um, on an individual level, then you'll lack conviction and this won't be on your focus list at the open. Right. Uh, that's really what it's about. You need to get the stock to have the characteristics. That's the name of the series, winning characteristics, to have it on your focus list, to have it high up on your focus list. You need conviction. Right. And to build conviction in your edges, you have to set, study them. That's just how it goes. If you do none of these, you'll never be in a mover uh, of this sort. So this particular stock, I, I picked it up. I mean, it was on my focus is this day. It just, just so happens that we gapped up on that day and I ended up initiating through that 80 mark um, and it stuck, right? And then knowing the character, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? 
we're, we're, it, it's trading within its confines. Now you expect a pullback. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, and it's doing that in a really good way uh, again and again. So I initiated uh, stock at, so 8078 was my entry. What I did was I scaled into strength right here through 95. So basically, this is what the stock did on the smaller frames. It moved above 95. And if it, if it held 95, I would hold the stock. But later in the session, it came down and violated the 95 level. I sold a third of my position at that point. And then the very next day, what we had is we got a downgrade, right? So sometimes stocks use downgrades as an excuse to accumulate more. Sometimes they actually do act like this. Um, and on this particular day, what we had was um, this was the 90 level stock opened down, tried to rally up to the 90, but didn't get to it. And then fell over later in the session. So at that point, uh, I basically got out as it opened below 90 and it tried to rally in. Didn't, it couldn't do it. I sold the rest of my position and I got a, about a net net 12% or so return on the name, uh, initiating at 80 selling into strength at 95 and then the rest at 90. Uh, the other thing get, uh, it's one thing that, the, you know, the characters, of the stock is one, two, three, like it tends to rally three days in a row, but the average winner, uh, for this year, post Feb has been for me in the, in the 17 and a half, uh, to about the 23, 24% mark. So at this point in this area, I was up about 18 and a half percent on this name. So knowing that, uh, you know, the average winner in the market for me has been in this particular range. Um, most likely than not, like even if it didn't fail 95, I would have taken at least a fourth out just knowing this stat, right? Uh, from doing my own, you know, that's just how this year has been. If you don't scale into strength, they won't allow you to, you know, you just, it won't allow you to sit. Um, it will just act like this and then do another, you know, three, four day run. Um, and you won't really make any money if, you know, you, 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 maybe you build that sort of, you know, ability to sit from a 68 to a 52. But for me, th this is a source of income. Uh, like I take it very seriously. So I need to be making progress on my equity curve week to week uh, for me to make it worth, you know, the effort. So, Current action, we'll quickly uh, discuss that. So now what it's doing is, you know, it's come off a of highs from 95 to 75, came back in and filled this particular gap to the T, uh, which is fairly interesting. Um, what I'm watching for is going to be some sort of consolidation, maybe start to respect that 80, uh, that the 80 area. If the market comes down and it holds the 80 area, if it wants to, right? Uh, then uh, it's going to be that same recipe. It needs to build me a recipe for me to get positioned in this again. Either that's worse as the 90 pivot at some point or the 80 pivot, or it comes back down to that 75 and 75 becomes that particular level. Whatever the case might be, if I could build my conviction on this, we see a double, maybe we see a double inside day after this day, right? With a dry up in volume, then that, that will be a spot to initiate stock again and see if we could uh, do another one of these, right? Because it's done that over here, it's done that over here. So maybe it does that again. So depending on what the stock does, uh, you treat it that way. Awesome. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. This is a nice quick one. Make sure you guys check out basically the other videos in this series. I think this is honestly the best way to learn technical analysis this series. So uh, check out the playlist down below. Um, and uh, with that, um, I guess, uh, thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you guys in future videos. Thanks.